common law and the law that comes out of governments, uh, what's the difference? Uh, in a nutshell, simply put, common law is uh, relates to living men and living women. Uh, believe it or not, this is uh, many of your listeners or viewers will not have actually established their position as a living man or woman. If you ask the individual for identification or to prove who they are, they will pass on various documents to you, a bank card, a driving license, a passport. Uh, unfortunately, all these pieces of identification are for a legal fiction. They're not for a living man. And there is a distinct a distinction between both. Now, common law relates to this basic principles of cause no harm, cause no loss, cause no injury, and ensure that you're honorable in your contractual dealings. That's it in a nutshell. Statutory law and the law of the government, uh, they operate under a maritime system and basically it says they have laws, statute acts, which are effectively not laws. Uh, they only become law if the people consent to them. If you do not consent, they're only rules and regulations, but they are applicable to the legal identity, the person. And when they relate to the legal system, that's the government system, uh, they refer to the term legal. Now, under common law, when you actually operate in everyday life under common law, we only use the term lawful. Legal is obviously a statutory term and it relates to the person. It's got nothing to do with a living man or woman. So there is two distinctions, legal for the statutory system in government, lawful for men and women. And again, the distinction is under common law, we only deal with living men and women. And under the statutory law, they cannot deal with living men and women. They can only deal with the idea of the fiction, which is literally a contractual agreement. Okay, so if, if they're operating with statute law, uh, which is the law of contracts, uh, maritime trading law, uh, basically, that means they have to create corporations to contract with each other. So what a surprise that it turns out that governments, government agencies, police forces, courts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, are corporations. That would stagger people who um, have never come across this. Believe it or not, I actually spoke to a judge earlier on this week um, outside the courts, believe it or not. <laughs> I was introduced to a judge who I spoke to, and they've been in the system for 20 years. They did not know that the court they were based in was actually a registered company. They actually believe that they are there to provide justice. Now, uh, we can confirm every court, this is what we're based in the UK just now, but it's applicable worldwide. Every court within the statutory system is a registered company. They're actually there for profit and they're not there for justice. Justice does not exist in their system. It's all contractual deals, contractual agreements, and it's based on money. And again, they're also using that to detain the people and obviously keep them in order and obviously keep them in their houses. So they use this legislation when it suits them to control the people. Unfortunately, the people don't know that. Now, the same also applies to the police. The police, believe it or not, are also registered companies. They're not there to protect the public. They are actually officers. Previously, years ago, decades ago, we used to see the bobby on the beat. The bobby on the beat was known as a constable, which is fine. They, they were there to protect or prevent a breach of the peace. That's changed now. You don't have constables. You actually have officers. They're enforcement officers. They're there to collect money to charge you, penalise you. Uh, we've seen with this lockdown and even tracker, traffic offences, they're there to collect money. It's all about profit. And as I says, we no longer have a police force. It's all corporations. The same are applicable to the judges, uh, the courts, the government. The government, <laughs> believe it or not, even the House of Commons, they're all registered companies. It's nothing to do with men and women. We don't have men and women in Parliament. We have corporations. So you need